Hey guys, welcome to a new game that I found recently called Sovel. Uh, it's a free to play game and we'll see later on what it comes with. But uh, Sovel is basically a fantasy tabletop wargaming rule set. So uh, you can play this as a tabletop wargaming type thing and this particular video game is just an adaptation of that we go into the army builder as you can see here there's all the different races here and you can see there's the classic humans there's orcs there's dwarves elves undead and then these are the paid races so this free game basically comes with uh, five of your classic fantasy uh, factions or races and uh it's it's a really good game and this is the army builder uh, as i mentioned before and here you can choose your commander you can choose your frontliners and they all have a points cost and as you can see here you're limited to uh six units and 500 points in total for your army and I guess this army builder uh, in the game can also double as an army builder for your um, tabletop uh, wargaming uh, army as well, or warband rather, since it's pretty small. And as you can see here, there's multiplayer. You can play ranked games. I think there's a there's a like a ladder or an uh, if you're familiar with games like League of Legends, there's a or Dota, there's like an ELO or an MMR, so a ranking associated with that. You can play a custom game, or you can play versus AI. And I think uh, these modes use uh, an army you've created in the army builder, which is kind of cool. And you can, I guess, test out your, your build uh, against an AI and against friends if you want. Uh, but what I'm more interested is in the campaign, which is a sort of a roguelike style. Roguelike or roguelite. I can never remember exactly <laughs> the differentiation between the two types, but there is that element to the campaign, which we're going to take a look at soon. Uh, let's just head in. And here you can see, uh, you can see that, the, all the different races that we saw before. So here, as you can see, you have to buy the DLC. The DLC are, I think it's like, well, in Australia, they're seven fifty. I guess US is like 5 bucks or something like that, which is a pretty decent deal, considering this is a completely free game and it comes with five races uh, out of the box straight away. Uh, as you can see up here, there's uh, a little bit of meta progression. So... Uh, you can unlock different units that you can again then uh, get access to for subsequent runs, which is quite nice. So I've already unlocked the first one for the Empires of Men. From memory, it was like the Light Imperial Cavalry or something like that. Uh, if we look at Greenskins, I haven't played them at all, so I haven't unlocked anything and I have no progression. The Dwarves, I've unlocked two and Inferno Cannon is the final one I have to unlock. You can see here the Elves. I basically unlocked everything that we can there. And the Undead I've also not played at all. And so that's the meta progression for just playing the game. Even if you fail a run, you'll get some of that progression towards unlocking those extra units. If you are able to finish a full run, as you can see here, there's also challenge levels. Uh, if we go back to the green skins, you can see they're all unlocked because I just haven't finished any, or I haven't played any single runs with orcs or undead, so that everything is unlocked. Whereas with the elves, I've actually unlocked challenge level three. And if we look at the different... Uh, different uh, leaders which are over here as you can see you can choose from three different leaders for some races 
or I think most races, yeah, except elves have, uh, you have to buy a support pack for this one, which is fine. That's pretty cool. Spell sword. But yeah, as you can see here, I've unlocked and completed two of the, two of the challenge levels already with the elf mage. With the elf noble, I've only, uh, completed one, which is the filled in dot. And if you look here, obviously it's it's locked. So I've unlocked these, but with the Elf Noble, I've only finished challenge level one. And if you look at the Elf Mage, I've actually finished challenge level one and two with the Elf Mage. And mainly because once you uh, beat challenge level seven, you get a reward. I obviously haven't reached the, <laughs> the that reward level with uh, any race or any leader but for the elf mage if you get to completing the challenge level of the end you unlock the cool elf sorceress which looks super interesting and she looks like she might be a drow as well which is cool uh, I'm not sure exactly what the variant will do uh, as compared to what the elf mage himself does but hopefully I'll eventually find out. Uh, for me, I, th I do think that of the five races or classic races and the five that are already unlocked or come with the game itself, Elf is probably my favorite. Uh, out of all of them, I think as a Skaven lover, the Rat Boys are probably my favorite and I'm probably going to pick them up at some point at the very least because yeah i just like the the rap boy <laughs> the rap boys from warhammer fantasy so that'll definitely be the first um uh, faction pack up pick up but uh yeah let's start this run off because i do want to get to the elf sorceress as i said so i'll probably be doing uh elf made runs quite a bit uh whether or not i'll be doing them Oh, well, whether or not I'll be making videos out of all the runs, I'm not sure yet. Uh, if you want to see more, uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. That'll help me uh, know that you guys want more of this sort of stuff. And if you want to see the other races or leaders, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you want to see. But for now, let's... Let's do challenge level three and we'll start. And here we have to make two choices and both choices give um, um, three options. In this case, there's elf spear, elf city guard and elf bolt thrower. As you can see here, there's a times two. I quite like having elf bolt throwers because they are our artillery. So I think I'll go with them. Ooh, Elf Lancers, Elf Reavers, or Elf Chariots. There are two chariots. I think I want to go with Elf Reavers, though. I do like that the Elf Reavers are mounted and they come with bows, so that's good. So I'll take them. I have taken Elf Chariots before, which is quite nice. I think I beat challenge level two, picking two elf chariots and two elf uh, bolt throwers. So I think I want to change it up and go with reavers. So these are our starting units. We got two elf bolt throwers that we pick first. We've got elf reavers that we pick second. And obviously our leader is the elf mage. What's not shown here is that all leaders actually come with their kind of retinue or their their sort of bodyguard unit. So for the elf mage, he actually starts attached to a, uh, a regiment of elf archers. So in theory, we have two elf bolt throwers, one elf reaver, one elf mage, and also an el uh, elf archer troop as well. So we'll see that once we get into battle. Uh, but for now, let's embark. So the goal here for this is to, we, 
we start from this end, the left side, and the goal is obviously to get to the boss fight here and beat the boss fight, and that that will complete uh, one, and that will progress us to Act Two. And once you beat the final boss of Act Two, that for now anyway, that counts as a completed run. I'm not sure if the dev is going to add more acts, but We'll see what happens there. I think the last patch from memory was patch 0.58. So I think there are plans to do a hell of a lot for the game, considering how much content is already uh, in the actual game. And it's a free to play game that it's actually quite crazy. And it's a ton of fun. So now Obviously, I just mentioned that we want to make our way from the left side to the right side to get to the boss. And as you can see here, it plays out similar to uh, a very, very cool old school game, Faster Than Light, in terms of the map progression. So as we can see here, there's also a legend in the bottom right corner that explains everything. So a battle is just that, does what it says it's a fight which we'll take a look at afterwards once we get into one random event is just exactly that too but the random event or i think almost always results in a positive outcome it's just that some of the random events even though you do get a positive outcome there are events that can also uh come with some sort of negative so if you get lucky you don't encounter one of those that that have a potential to have negative outcomes but almost always you will get a positive outcome from what i've experienced armory is essentially um, a sort of a shop i guess as the name armory implies and you can upgrade the or give your your individual troops uh, uh, upgraded weapons better weapons some banners that'll give them boosts some sometimes you can buy items that are one-time use every fight or maybe just one-time use completely I'm not exactly sure but you can also recruit new regiments into your army which is actually quite quite good especially if you can uh, encounter them early on and pick them up so that they gain experience elite battles are the same as battles but the enemy is usually a lot tougher obviously i th i'm not sure but i would assume you would get better rewards but I, even though i've played this game quite a bit i don't quite remember noticing any uh appreciable difference in the rewards so i can't exactly sure what the benefit of going to elite battles is other than you know uh, a bit more of a challenge and slightly better rewards i'm not exactly sure as i said uh i guess we'll find out <laughs> and yeah see how that goes I'm not sure. I never actually bothered to look on the wiki, so maybe the wiki actually tells uh, tells you what the rewards for the elite battle is, which I might go and take a look at after. Uh, the campsite is where you can heal up your army and and get some experience as well. So uh, it prob if if your progression through the the map means you're you've taken a lot of damage it's obviously good to go to a campsite just to recover and especially in a situation here where there's campsite right before the boss that's always really handy to have and obviously you want to go and uh, from from the starting point to the boss and pick the the path that is most optimal for you to obviously go uh, survive to the boss fight and then beat it so usually you would uh yeah you'd have to be adaptable obviously and then you once you get to a branching section then you can choose which way to go 
So for me, I think I want to go down this way. I don't mind the random events. I think they're quite cool. So the earlier you can encounter random events, uh, the better from my perspective. And the earlier you can get uh, an armory and hopefully have enough cash to to buy things at the armory, also the better. And then, like, if we, I think what I do want to go through the bottom path, and then once we get to this armory, we can decide on whether we want to go to the random event or the battle before. And then, obviously, if we go for the battle, we can choose between an elite battle or a normal battle. And obviously, if we go down this way, there's a camp right here, which is quite nice. And also a random event as well. So we'll see how we go. We'll start off. Yeah, we'll start off down here because I want the random event. So let's do that. We can get into a battle and see what's going on. Okay, we're fighting orcs. That's going to be interesting. Uh, okay, and as you can see here, the mage comes with nine archers. So we actually start with essentially four regiments of troops. And combat starts off with a dice roll to see who gets the first turn initiative, so to speak. And it looks like we rolled a two, they rolled a three. And so obviously the orcs are starting before us, but now we are in deployment phase, which is the, always the first thing that happens. Uh, at the start, very, very start of a fight, so uh, let's see what's on on the map. We see lots of forests and we see some rocks, cliffs. Uh, this terrain is impassable and obvious, uh, obviously a cliff will block line of sight. Line of sight is quite important in, in this because if the line of sight is blocked like this, because we have archers, you would think, and this is one of the things that doesn't quite make sense at the moment, but if you have, let's say the Reavers in front of our archers, you would think the archers could arch their shots over the Reavers, but uh, in this game, that's not how it works. So you want, uh, you don't want anything blocking your line of sight from uh, for your archers because they can't arc their shots over. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, as you can see here, forest says difficult terrain. Essentially, if you, let's say the archers are here, the forest will block line of sight for the archers. But if you are actually inside the forest, you'll be able to shoot out and the enemy can actually shoot in. But uh, if you're unit or troop is in the forest they will get uh or any range attacks by the enemy shooting at your your troop inside the forest will suffer a minus one penalty to their two hit rolls and that's just uh cover so it's always good to try and put your units in inside a forest for cover if possible so for me, I want to put at least one bolt thrower in there. And because there is line of sight stuff, I'm putting one at the back, one at the front. So that they can shoot across here if necessary. Usually in the first battle, there's only two troops. So yeah, it's one of those things where the setup is less important at the very start but it's always good to get into the habit of um, deploying well, I suppose. So I think I want to start like this. And let's get started. As you can see up here, there's three phases to combat. Charge phase, no one's in range to charge. So we just went straight to the strategic phase. If you want to look at your unit's charge range, you hold X and that shows up like this. If you hold C, you can see the charge range of the enemies. Because the orcs had first turn, the boar riders moved, and as you can see, they moved into charge range of our units. 
so if we're not careful on the next turn of combat they will charge one of our units uh, but for now it's our turn so if we look at the bolt throwers let's activate them and now a number pops up on top of them which is seven and that shows how many movement points they have so you can move a maximum of seven and if you're move, moving through difficult terrain obviously you can move uh, cost more movement to make your way through that as opposed to if you are moving through just open ground uh, now as you can see here you, i can move but because I haven't confirmed it, I can use right click to undo that move. Uh, however, if, let's say, because here I can turn the, the direction that my unit is facing. Because the units are in this direction, I'll turn a little bit. Uh, but what I can do now is, now that I've turned my unit, I can double click and heat and the actual unit will, will fulfill that, that action. But if I just move forwards and I think that's a mistake and then I th I'm like, oh, I want to change direction and then I feel like, oh, that's a bit too far. I don't want to do that. I can actually right click all the way back to my last sort of confirmed move. So you can do a little bit of planning for just the unit you have active at that moment. Uh, I'm happy with that. So I, I want to attack them so let's do that but as you can see here there i can actually target the orc warriors and if you hover it shows you their minus one long range so the sort of dark green part of the vision cone uh, is actually long range and attacking or shooting anyone any enemies in long range results in a minus one penalty to your hit which is why this these orc warriors are four plus to hit but the boar riders who are in the light lighter green zone which is considered close range they are three plus to hit so the four plus is the minus one long range so it's up. usually it's always ideal to hit closer because you have a, a better chance of actually landing the hit so let's hit the boar riders because they are in our charge range and we want to whittle them down as much as possible before they get a chance to charge us so let's attack as you can see there we've got three hits at three plus and we on three three six-sided dice rolls we got three four and five unfortunately for us oh yeah and yeah, unfortunately for us, they roll two sixes, which is crazy considering they had to roll five plus to save. So they saved two of the the three shots that got through, which means they only take one wound. And as you can see here, the dice roll is determined by power six versus defense five. So we... What is there? Defense 5, power 6. Okay, I'm not sure how we got power 6 here. But uh, yeah, that that's why it was a 5 plus. I think they have, they have maybe the lethal shots is what... Yeah, ooh, is it? I'm not, I, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, yeah, so the 5 plus was because our power 6 versus their defense 5. And uh, they got really lucky. So this this particular game, and as most dice rolling uh, games go, you can get XCOM a bit, <laughs> where they have five plus, they roll lots of high rolls, and then when you need like two or three plus, you low roll everything. So just be prepared for that kind of stuff to happen in this game. Okay, now that we've taken our shot, we will end our turn. They'll move there, that's fine. And now, once again, I'll try to whittle down the boar riders. Let's do that again. 
There we go. We only got two hits. And they saved one of them again, which is super annoying. Alright, so let's turn this way with these guys. Uh, yep. So let's see. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. We've got them in close range, so let's attack. Yeah, see? Three plus to hit. We only got four hits, and then they had a three plus because our power is three and their defense is five. And then they saved three, which is kind of annoying. I was hoping for more hits from our three plus, but as you can see, we rolled so many low rolls, as I said, were can happen but yeah they have our mage has an uh, ability but i think we don't want to use that just yet so we'll end the turn uh we can shoot the orc warriors so let's do that and they save them all yeah annoying but it is what it is okay now we go to combat phase because there's no melee combat just automatically go to the next turn. Uh, okay, the bull riders are charging our mage and their archers. We can't really do anything. Yeah, we're not even in charge range of the orc warriors, so can't do anything about that. Okay, they've charged in. Now we have quite a problem because uh, troops engaged in melee combat like this can't be targeted by range attacks as you can see here we can't shoot it because they're engaged in melee presumably because there's a there's a decent chance that if you shoot at them you'll actually hit your own units which is not ideal obviously so now we have to figure out how we can get in range to hit the orc warriors uh, let's turn a little bit let's move Yes. Can we? Can't quite. Oh, we can. Yeah. So now we can just get there. So let's let's attack them. Is long range, and we rolled one. They rolled a one, two at least. So it's that. Uh, no, we don't want to do. Skip that now. I don't think we can get into. Well, I suppose we could try and get into some kind of uh, shooting range. If... Nah, not quite, yeah. Oh well, we made a move. Can we... No, we can't quite charge. Uh, in this, you can actually charge their flanks or their rears to try and um, help out with this particular combat or just to charge them in the flank or the rear. It's obviously more ideal to charge in on the flank or the rear because that ends up giving you a bonus to your combat score, which we can talk about once we get to the combat phase. Uh, because we can't do anything else here, let's just end up uh, the turn on the bolt thrower. We will shoot the orc warriors. They failed to both saves, okay. Finally, their turn to roll, low roll. Uh, we should be able to, yeah, we are in charge range, so that should be good. Uh, I think I want to charge, move forward here. Try and charge them in the flank, because the flank is more damaging, which we'll take a look at. Let's end the turn here. Uh, with this one, let's activate. Now that we're in actual melee combat, uh, I think you can use Divine Favor outside of melee combat because, yeah, well, yeah, because the boost to skill is nice as well. And I forgot to explain that, but if we can look here at the, at the card for the units, skill is basically chance to hit. Uh, I think. I don't remember if the chance to hit is determined by comparing skill to defense or skill versus skill, but essentially the skill stat determines your chance to hit both melee and range attacks. Power is uh, 
this chance to actually damage them. So power versus the defense determines the defending unit's uh, save, save roll. And obviously defense is that. Attacks is two attacks, so... On this card, this is reference to the Elf Mage, so the Elf Mage has two attacks. But up here is other archers that the mage is, is attached to, so the archers have one attack, which means every single model within that troop or regiment has one attack, so... Can we see it? Uh, can't quite see it at the moment, but I think there are... There are nine archers in this regiment, so that means each of those archers will do one attack. And obviously here we can boost their skill, so let's do that. Yeah, there we go, there are nine archers, so... Okay, we're rolling to hit now, so first up, as you can see here, it's our mages going against the boar riders, so... We're rolling our mages to hit. We hit with both attacks. They save one, okay. Now they attack with six attacks on four plus. They miss them all, which is good for us. And only one got through. Let's see, probably we do save it. I was expecting not to save it. So their power versus our defense meant we only had a five plus. Now it's our archer's turn to attack, as you can see here. And yeah, we have nine archers, so we have nine hits. Six is decent. They have three plus and they save all but one of them. So that's a bit annoying. We did win combat two to zero and they failed the, their morale check to, and they legged it. And the morale check is determined by the discipline. So depending on how the combat went, they're there will be a penalty if the combat went poorly, obviously. And obviously, wounds uh, tells you how many hits uh, each unit within the, the regiment can take. So it takes two, two wounds to kill off one reaver. So eventually, in this case, once the reavers take a total of 10 wounds, the whole unit is basically eliminated from the battle. Uh, okay, now that we finish that fight, uh, the boar riders have turned tail. We will charge into the side, which is exactly what we wanted. We can also charge with the bolt rod. But I don't think we want to do that. I don't want to risk taking too much damage with the bolt throwers. When we can just hang back and shoot them. So let's convert, confirm our charges. Okay, now they're engaged in melee combat. We'll shoot these guys. Only one hit. Which they saved, okay. I don't know if there's any benefit to shooting them, but I do want to eliminate them so that they don't have a chance to rally and come back to torment us. Uh, let's turn with our mage and archers and let's push forward, see if we can... Ah, oh, I don't think we can quite reach there. Okay, so let's use divine favor on our reavers then go into combat now. I didn't mention it before, but as you can see up here, this is the combat score. So whoever has a higher combat score will win the actual melee combat. And because we charge them, charge them in the flank, we start off with a plus one there. Uh, both combatants will get extra, uh, extra, oh well, another uh, combat score for every wound they inflict. And 
a side charge here gives a bonus of plus one, but if you do a rear charge, that gives a bonus of plus two, which is why charges on rears and flanks are ideal because you get bonus to the combat score. You can also get, uh, get uh, I think it was a flag that lets you get a bonus to combat score as well when you go to the armory, but we'll see if that happens uh, later on. Uh, we have five reavers, they both, they all have two attacks each, so we've got ten hits. We actually hit with eight of our attacks, which is nice. Okay, awesome. We hit, and as you can see here, we they say three kills, but essentially it means we inflicted three wounds to get plus three to our combat score. Uh, they have three attacks and only one got through. And it, we suffered one wound, so... And they bailed, so essentially this is over. Yep. And we only suffered that one wound, I think. And this is the victory... Um, victory screen, I guess. Shows you how many kills were gotten by each uh, troop. How many were models, I think, were lost. I think. Yeah, I think that's what that means. Although we have 9 out of 12. So I guess we started off at 9 out of 12 and we didn't lose anyone. So that's just how this started. Maybe this is because of the challenge level. I think challenge level 3 is... Yeah, smaller starting unit, which is why we have 9 instead of 12. Fair enough. So, yeah. If you get enough experience, you level up. And you can click the level up to do that, which we'll talk about once we, we get to that point. Uh, otherwise, there's rest and loot. So, for... For rest, it's just recovering wounds or recovering models within each troop. Because we are full on these guys, I like that the game doesn't even let you accidentally click the recover, the, the rest and recover option. So we'll take the cash. It's important to get quite a bit of cash so that we can do stuff at armories and potentially at certain random events as well. Uh, for the archers, I think we'll take the cash as well. And let's move on. Okay, now we'll go for the random event, see what we get. Ooh, so we get, we encounter mercenaries. That's pretty good. Dwarf cannon. Cannon range 48, D3 hits, protected crew. That's pretty good. Uh, if we hire them, though, we'll get minus 20% gold income, which is kind of bad. But for this unit this early, I think it's worth it. Because it doesn't cost us anything. It just costs us 20% gold income for the rest of the run. All right, so let's go on to the next fight now. We're up against undead zombies this time. Okay. Uh, we can put our elf mages in the forest. Let's put bolt throwers and a dead dwarf cannons over here, and then we'll just leave our reavers in the middle. Uh, this big thing is well. It's a building and we can't shoot through there so I don't want to be in this forest because there's a lot of stuff blocking line of sight which I'm, uh, is not ideal for us. We won the initiative so we're moving first. Okay so they have dire wolves. Uh, let's see. Let's use the cannons, our new cannons. Uh, as you can see here the, the line of sight cone doesn't have, well, it does have long range, short range, but uh, yeah. The dwarf cannon has huge range, so close range is quite, 
quite far away anyway, so let's attack the Diwolves since they can charge us. As you can see here, the Dwarf Cannons, and the, I guess, gunpowder sort of artillery ends up being a little bit different. You don't actually roll to hit. Uh, I think you roll for, for how many actual shots and attacks you, you do. And they seem to just automatically hit. I guess we can click the question mark to to uh, have a look at how that that works with the wiki, but not we won't do that just yet. And on a six plus, they failed all. Oh, they failed both rolls. So that works for us. Let's end our turn. They move forward. They're now in our uh, close range, so let's use our bolt draws. That's not a great result. Uh, do we want to use Elf Mage? Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to reach the other guys, so let's just use that. Six hits, and we took them out. Nice, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And then we'll move this way a little bit. That works, that's fine. We aren't in cover anymore, that's a bit... Bit of a mistake on my part, but luckily they don't have any range. Let's hit the one closest to us. They rolled a six, of course they would. Why wouldn't they? Can we charge them? We can kind of charge them. Let's not bother shooting them. They're saved. Okay. There's no combat, so we'll go straight to charge. We'll ignore the charge, even though we can, because they are quite slow, so... Okay. Three hits this time. <laughs> Sixes. Quite BS as far as I'm concerned. Let's shoot them again. Two hits. They didn't save at that time, so they lost two more. Keep shooting those guys. They lost two more. Perfect. They saved one. Okay. Let's move uh, like this and prepare to charge them. They can't counter charge us, so that's good. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's move a little bit closer. Get better shots off. straight to charge phase again. Charge these guys, because there's less of them. So hopefully we'll do better. All right. Shoot. One, really. Only one, one attack or hit. Two. Necessarily want to do that. Yeah, let's move forwards, I guess. Okay, they got one save. Which is ideal. Can, oh, they can still charge us. Uh, let's just go here. We can still attack them. Wow, only five? Really? Uh, okay, let's use Divine Favor on Reavers. Eight hits, nice. Oh, perfect. That should destroy. 
会的嘛。We can't really attack or do anything. Everything's in LA, so let's do this. This should be a. I mean, okay, I've got two hits. They got both saves. Two hits. Two wounds. So we should win this combat now. Yeah, I think it's going to get wiped out. No, they're not one survive. They should crumble anyway. Yep. And we've got a victory. And after every combat, uh, they should... Oh, they, these guys don't recover models. Okay. They just start that way and never recover. Okay, that's interesting. Let's level up. As you can see here, when you level up, you can choose one between three options. Gold when looting could be nice, especially because we're suffering a big penalty to our income. Uh, I'll take skill because that's still two hit. And I think I'd favor that over the other options. They just give me the same options for both bolt rolls. That's a bit weird. Take skill again. Reavers. Ah, yes, this is what I want. Max unit size. So let's take that. Getting more entities in each of our troops is always nice. Uh, we'll take cash with all of these. Uh, just looking at that, I guess challenge level 3 applies to the previous uh, challenges or the, the, I guess the conditions for the previous challenge levels too. Didn't realize that, but that that's, that's fine, I suppose. Uh, we can recover two. So let's do that. And I might actually, ooh, yeah, I think I want the full archer stack. Let's go do that. We have armory, so let's go in there. As you can see here, we get elf reavers, elf chariot, or elf spears. Uh, do we need chariots? I don't think so. But uh, as you can see here, if there's a unit that says retinue, that actually then attaches onto the leader. And I guess in, in this situation, the archers would become their own. Uh, regiment by themselves. Not sure how it'll work with the elf mage if the mage doesn't have a a um a mount. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. I'm not exactly sure about that. Uh, let's see. So we could get elf chariot, but I would prefer shadow bolt because that is a uh, the mage actually starts off with a buff, and it's always good to get a damage spell on them. So let's take Shadow Bolt. Uh, Reroll failed discipline tests, one movement, or counts as being in cover, which could be pretty handy. The archers have the same thing. Okay. Reroll failed damage saves. Radiant shield could be nice too. Minus one to targets damage save. Explosive shells. Uh, can't get anything with them for some reason. That's odd. I'll take explosive shells and then we'll just move on. We'll 
save our cash for something down the road. We could get another event. And what I'm actually thinking is I will go for the the um, random event and then we'll do the we'll do the um, elite fight and then we'll probably head up this way depending on how these two battles go I might go to the, the direction of the camp if there's these two fights end up causing lot of, lots of casualties otherwise we might be able to go down this way go to the random event ooh ooh this is very interesting okay i'm glad i saved this cash i think i want to take the forest dragon mount mainly because I haven't been able to properly use a dragon before. And let's be honest, I want my mage on a dragon mount because that's just too cool. So let's do that. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at army view. Yep, so our archers are now a range support unit. And we have a forest dragon. Okay, five skill, six power, five defense, five attack, seven wounds, nine discipline. They have fangs, plus one power for charge bonus. Range 12, 2d3, power five. That's pretty nice. And flying. That's epic. And now our mage has shadow bolt, which is really nice. So that's cool. Uh... I think this is a good place to end this episode. Uh, we'll kick it off in the next one with an elite fight straight away. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed uh, watching this, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below to to ask questions or or talk about this particular game or this run. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it. Uh, consider hitting the subscribe button and dropping a like on the video to let me know that that um, you enjoyed this particular video and want to see the series continue. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me for this new game and I hope to see you in the next one.